With Houdini 18.5, character rigs and FBXs have been moved to the stops level. In the first course of this series, I'll be going over the basics of KinFX inside Houdini 18.5 and how it can be useful in many ways. To start, the way we import FBXs is now completely different. To start, we're just going to drop a geometry node, and then we'll hop right in that. And then the way we import FBXs now is through um, FBX. Uh, through, through kin effects. So there's FBX character import, FBX skin import, um, and FBX animation import. FBX character import kind of combines all, all of these. Um, so really this is the one you'll be using most of the time. Um, the others are just kind of there if you want to isolate stuff. So we'll import it and from the get-go um, there's nothing plugged into it so we don't see anything. So I will go ahead and put in one of my just, this is just the base model I downloaded from Mixamo, um, so I'll just open it up, and you'll see right away we are seeing the uh, rest model, and we can see these bones inside of her. And one thing we'll also notice is that um, it came in at the right size, which is great because we have this little convert units button, um, which <laughs> without it it would import. I think she's about uh, 200 meters high in this one, so. That would happen to be a lot, and it would be annoying having to go real scale everything and uh, bring everything down. So it's just a nice little thing. They have this automatic um, conversion of units. So she should be the right size. Okay, so let's break down what these three little outputs are. So the first one is your rest geometry. So this is just the mesh. And then the second one, we got the capture pose, which is essentially the skeleton at its rest position. And then the third input, we don't actually always need. But this is if there is an animation or anything on your on your FBX. Um, and this is your animated pose. So this is basically your skeleton, but moving. So re-highlight this. And I bring in something that is animated. So this is her Roomba dancing. We'll see this, uh, this skeleton. And we'll see it move if we jump through the, the, the timeline. And... Uh, we'll notice that nothing's really happening with the base mesh um, and that's because each of these outputs don't really do anything to affect the, the model so we actually need another node for that we need a bone deform node I'll drop that down you'll notice it has three inputs which are actually these exact three uh, outputs so it has the basically the geometry you want to deform your model um, with all the painted weight attributes and everything and then you have your uh, rest points which is the skeleton at rest and then you have the deep form points which is your skeleton animated so if I move and I plug all three of these in you'll notice we have this, this little uh, Roomba dance animation and I'll go ahead and I'll hide this to the timeline so awesome so we can import animations and if we wanted to on the timing, so there's, if we wanted to make this slower or make the animation faster, on the FBX character import node, we have this timing tab. And we can do it by time or, or by frames. Um, and let's say I wanted to make this twice as fast. I just input that too. Now she's going twice as fast. Let's just make this drastic so you can see. <laughs> so that's 10 times as fast. Um, I can make it like half speed. Now she's slow Roomba dancing. Um, so yeah, so that's how um, you can kind of play around with stuff. You can change the animation start time. By default, it's linked to the first frame you have. So uh, I have mine set to 1 right now. If I change it to 10, then the animation is going to start at 10. I actually think I might need to change this by time. Yeah, okay, so you can see now it starts at 10, 15, 20. All that stuff. So that's great. Um, but now I'm gonna go back to just the base mesh with no animation. And from here, I'm gonna show you how we can control FBXs that have skeletons but no animation. Basically, most of KinFX revolves around one. I mean, I wouldn't say revolves around it because uh, you don't really want to use this to animate, but um, for posing and for just right out of the box, the node rig pose is going to be one of your most used nodes in this uh, scenario. And what we're going to do is we're going to be plugging this in 
from the animated pose into the deformed points. And you'll notice nothing is really on this node. We won't want to be controlling this node from the parameters. We want to control this node in the viewport. And essentially what it does is it allows you to rotate and transform the joints of your skeleton mesh. So you can uh, do things. So if I select this elbow joint and I start moving it, you'll see that all of a sudden we can deform our mesh by the skeleton without having to do any type of setups or anything. Um, and this is essentially uh, what's considered FK animation, which is where, um, according to the hierarchy, you'll see we have this new hierarchy view. If I was to move the right shoulder, then the right arm, the right forearm, and everything down this list would rotate along with it. You'll see if I rotate this, everything's moving downward. But if I say rotate the finger, it's only going to rotate um, what's down the hierarchy of this. And the hip is usually where you'll control any type of master movement. As you can see, I can move uh, her whole body here. If I want to move the leg up, this down. So this is a really quick way of just immediately getting poses out. And you'll notice as you move things in here, we'll get these added little parameters. Um, so if I move the foot that I hadn't already moved, you'd see, well, okay, well, this is seven now, so I have transformed seven joints, and now if I click on another joint that I have not added yet, it's going to add another um, transformation. And the nice thing about this is you can go through these and you can either just clear the whole thing out. So if I hit the clear button, then we're back to no transformations. But let's say I wanted this to, um, see, I don't like these because these numbers are like incredibly small and they, they bother me. So I'm going to zero these out. And then I'm going to change the rotation to minus 45 because I only want it to be rotated 45 uh, degrees. And so you can, you can use this directly if you want to, but you do have to just kind of select, just kind of to touch it. Uh, any of the joints to, to get them up on here. One thing that you want to note is that typically with rig pose, you don't want to be doing much transforms. So you want to, I mean, when I say transforms, I mean literally like the position. Um, rotations, awesome, work perfectly fine. But as soon as you start transforming things, um, there is no constraints on this rig pose. So you'll notice things kind of just start uh, deforming and just not not some great looks um if you accidentally touch some of the translates or anything um, you can uh, control middle mouse button click to zero them out um, same with the rotations or uh, any of that stuff so what can we do um with this um because like i said animating on the rig pose is usually not what most people I mean, you definitely can do it, and there's definitely been times I've done it. Um, I'm not saying don't do it, um, but I'm saying usually it's not the ideal way to go about um, animating uh, these FBX characters. So one thing I like to do a lot is, so let's get a pose here. So I'm just going to put our arms down, and let's say I wanted to have her look off to the right. Um, one thing you'll notice about rig poses is that they're procedural. So they kind of stack on top of each other in local space. So this one, I can just rotate her neck. And on this one, I'm going to go call it rotation neck rot. And then on this one, I'm going to call it arms down. And you'll see that if I plug this one just directly into the base, her head is still gonna be exactly the same. Everything we edited on this node is still going to be applied, but we can just take this off. So to maybe, to maybe show you a better way of this, um, I'm gonna rotate the neck on the arms down rig pose. Oh, get this out of here. And then I'm going to add this on top. And you'll see that this actually, 
this rotation adds on to the other rotation. So we can keep rotating on this, and then this will still be applied after that one. So the nice thing about this is that we can use this to create um, some nice poses. And I'm going to just delete this neck transformation. So let's say I wanted to make her head go left and right, and I didn't want to... Um, I essentially didn't want to uh, animate using the rig pose and just have to do that, uh, animate all three uh, rotations every time I wanted to rotate her neck. So I'm going to go ahead and call this R L for rotate left. And I'm just going to alt drag to create another one. And then I'm going to go ahead and create this and drag her head that way. So I have a left and a right. And what I can do now is we have this other node, which is called Skeleton Blend. And this is different than a um, Blend Shapes or a uh, Sequence Blend or anything like that. Because this kin effects um, in Rig Pose works in local space and as well as world space. It, but um, instead of blending directly between uh, the two positions, it's going to kind of still maintain the hierarchy and the parenting uh, values. So we can go ahead in here and we can plug these guys in. And then right now it's set to one, which means that it's going to take the input from the, the B input, so the one, and then zero would be taken from this input. So we'll notice that, uh, I'm gonna call this, oh, this is a terrible naming structure actually, um, rot. Change this to rot left, so it's less confusing. Um, and so you'll notice she's looking right because I have it coming into the one. And now if I blend to zero, you can notice she'll be looking back and forth. And now the nice thing about this is we can use a lot of this. So I'm going to go call this look right, left. And then I'm just going to create another null. Put these guys in here. And then have this as kind of its own little thing. So we got this guy in here now. And then if we wanted to, we could just copy and paste this whole setup. And I'll take this again. And I'm going to zero these out for right now. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a rig pose that we can pose on. So I want one where her legs go up. And again, this is just for example. Um, this is uh, just trying to show you how you can use this. Um, so I'm going to call this legs up. And on this one, I'm actually going to just delete one of these guys and um, replace this one. So we actually want the original coming in through the first pass, so we can essentially say, um, don't do anything to the legs if we're at a value of zero, um, but if we're at a value of one, we want the legs lifted. And this won't override anything back here. Um, so we can use these to continuously um, adjust our model we can animate these values and um, they can look great um, and as far as just the basics uh, I'm gonna stop this video here and in the next one I'm gonna go over um, some more so uh, thank you for watching